Rules. So this is why you said this is an ongoing, an ongoing, ongoing situation. Cases yeah, here. it's an ongoing situation. This, this case is... Right uh, now, it's an ongoing yeah. situation here. And what we're um, about to do or doing at the moment, I'm looking at doing, reviewing all the cases that we've had historically. We thought that this um, anniversary would be a good opportunity to just refresh everything. Um, and we are going to look at the cases that we did, very many cases. I mean, we've just talked about a couple. Yeah. Right? Um, and we are going to refresh the evidence in those cases. We're going to ensure that we know where the individuals are that were yep. subject of the original complaints. And when they travel into the United Kingdom jurisdiction, possibly EU jurisdiction. I, I will come shortly to yeah. the next step we, we you, you can um, do. But back to the, your opinion piece in The Guardian and yeah. the day of the massacre, you, you wrote, and I quote, persecution military leaders using the principle of universal uh, jurisdiction can be difficult. But let it be a warning to the military leadership in Egypt. As recently as in January, police officers from Britain's specialist Metropolitan Police unit targeting suspected war criminals and the human rights abuser arrested and charged, uh, charged Nepalese Colonel Kumar Lama yes. for human rights abuses committed in Nepal. Colonel Lama worked as a UN peacekeeper in South Sudan during his arrest. He was visiting the UK on um, Christmas. And also, type th th this happened with Rwanda um, ex-spy chief uh, Pascal uh, Simbikangwa, who was arrested in France in 2008 and charged to 25 years in uh, prison in 2014 over the 1994 um, genocide in Rwanda. So why was this not the case with Egyptian officials? Well, I mean, it's not been the case yet with Egyptian officials. I think that's the really important point here. Hmm. You know, there's a saying, the wheels of justice turn slowly, right? And this is true. And you'll see in those cases that the criminal acts that they were accused of, particularly one, was quite a long time before any action was taken. And, and what I'd say to um, you and, and, and to the military personnel and the civilian personnel that are involved in these acts is that it's not over. It's not over at all. Mm. If you've committed a crime, those sleepless nights that you have when you ordered your soldiers to murder your own citizens or when you pointed your gun at your own citizens and shot them, you know, your brothers and sisters, your own people, when you did that, the sleepless nights you have because of that, because you have to have sleepless nights because of that. Every human being that I've ever spoken to in my criminal law practice regrets this type of thing when they, when they think about it. And it, 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 it affects them. Um, that nightmare is not over. That nightmare, at the moment, you're safe, it's in your dreams, but it, it, at any moment in time um, where you're traveling to a European country, um, the United States, or the United Kingdom, it could result in actual physical prosecution, detention, investigation with regards to you individually. And what I find is something that's really interesting a lot of the times, um, people wonder why there's a gap in this. So sometimes I get telephone calls from soldiers um, or from members of their families or politicians that say to me, look, I did this thing many years ago. I can't live with it anymore. I have to tell somebody about it. Right, And it's a way to get that sleep back again. You know, when mm. you're having these nightmares, it's a way to purge yourself of your wrongdoing. Yeah. And so, you know, anybody involved in that massacre in Rabba in all those many years ago, um, they're not safe. 